I'm Suzanne Arnaitra Penn, the senior editor with the Washington Independent Review of Books, and I'm here in Ann Arbor, Michigan today. Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, as you know, was the home of Borgers, uh, has a great tradition with uh, the University of Michigan. It's a great literary town, but after Borgers uh, faded away last year, uh, we were lacking bookstores in this area. Thankfully enough, we have uh, Hillary and Mike Gustafson, and they have just recently opened in April of 2013 Literati Bookstore. And we're just here to ask a few questions and see how, you know, just learn about the bookstore and see how uh, things are going so far. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, thanks for meeting with us. It's great to bring some Ann Arbor flavor to D.C. Um, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Um, so, why did you choose to open Literati? I mean, we know that you lost borders and there were no bookstores downtown. But you're also coming from Brooklyn, if I remember reading that correctly. That's true. Um, I grew up here in Ann Arbor and then worked for Simon & Schuster as a sales rep. And so I worked with about 60 different independent bookstores, um, helping them choose their inventory, helping them with marketing events, and really got to know them. And, you know, when Borders closed and then Chum and Gum, um, the local indie, you know, we were both like, how how is there no independent bookstore downtown. Um, and while there are a great number of niche bookstores, there was no one selling new books, um, especially with a focus in literary fiction, which is what we we do here. Um, in the downtown area. In there the downtown area. Are, there's Nicholas over on the west side, but there's nothing within the walkable distance. And, and when we were living in Brooklyn, we frequented all sorts of bookstores all the time. It was part of our livelihood. And we, we got engaged, and we started taking a look at uh, you know, dream job scenarios, and we'd always talked about opening a bookstore. Um, and we said, why not Ann Arbor? Why not here? Um, we were incensed that there wasn't a walkable uh, downtown bookstore. So we thought that we had a opportunity to try it, and we tried it, and here we are. So you've answered my next question. Is It was definitely a dream of yours to do this kind of work, to open a bookstore and really be available to the public and help them with their reading. Certainly, you know, we... You know, with my job working with independents on the business side, and then, you know, as part of our daily life, just going to independent bookstores, it was, you know, part of our lifestyle. And we always thought, you know, you know, especially during the time, independent bookstores now are kind of resurging with, um, with borders, um, closing shop nationally. But, um, you know, right after 2008, I think even 2009, they were struggling with both you know, the big chains and Amazon and, you know, the financial crisis. And so it was like we always talked among ourselves, like, what makes a viable bookstore? And, and you know, we always came up with ideas to, you know, think about ways to, to keep bookstores um, viable and part of our cultural fabric. So. Yeah, so Hillary spent, like, what, seven or eight months working on your business plan. Uh, and then you notified Simon Schuster that we were taking off, and then we – Moved to Ann Arbor um, after you quit your job mm -hmm. and looked around for spaces for like six or seven months. Wow. It was very difficult to find. I mean, nobody wanted to rent mm -hmm. to a bookstore. Books. Especially, <laughs> really? yeah. well, the narrative in Ann Arbor is like if we make it, yeah. how can you? So. And bookstores are failing. And like, why on earth would we rent to a bookstore when like the greatest bookstore um, that Ann Arbor's seen and it closed down? Um, if we're just going to make it, how, how could you guys? So uh, we had a lot of landlords that just wouldn't entertain the notion of us even occupying their space, and that was really frustrating. That was, mm -hmm. that was yeah. probably the, the worst part about this. But as soon as we got this space, um, we, we... There were some together. challenges, but we were like, we think this could be perfect. Yeah. And it's worked out really well, the being in this location down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually lived up the street <laughs> when yeah. I was a student here, so oh, it would have cool. been perfect for me. <laughs> oh, if I you know, know. Well, she's you know, so great. <laughs> Ten years ago, so um, okay. Uh, landlords aside, what kind of reaction have you had locally now that you're on your feet? Very positive, right? Yeah, I, I think it's since Ann Arbor's always kind of been a book town, a literary town. They really embraced us, and um, we especially connected with you know the former Borders. Crowd and they were really supportive from the beginning, and um, we even had a former shaman drum person on staff, and so it was really nice to have that book community, you know, that's already built into Ann Arbor, kind of support us. Mm -hmm. um, 
And the community at large has been really great. Michael has been really um, great at kind of the social media aspect of it. We've, we've gotten a lot of support there, which we didn't necessarily expect. Yeah, as soon as we announced that we were that we had signed the lease, um, it sort of went viral. We had a blog post, and it went viral in the Ann Arbor community. Um, we thought that the biggest struggle was going to be getting the word out, and that wasn't the biggest struggle at all. Uh, we thought that a struggle would be convincing people to buy real books. That's not really a struggle here. I mean, Ann Arbor's re always been uh, one of the most well-read cities in the United States. Um, they used to have, I think, the highest per capita amount of bookstores uh, in the entire country. Um, so we didn't really have to sort of pitch the idea of a bookstore. I think people were just really longing for a bookstore, and it was one of those things, right time, right place for us. And that's, um, that's, yeah, and that's not to say that every person that doesn't come in the store isn't already kind of, you know, under, let's, we have some people who understand the shop local, the importance of buying physical books, and then we have people who take are, pictures of the cover with their cell phones and then right. and go buy them online. And so, you know, that that is just a balance that we have to deal with all the time. And you know, people often, you know, we sell books at retail price, and people often come in and say, "Well, how much is the book?" And it's like, "Well, it's the price is printed on the back of the cover." Uh -huh. And right. you know, people sometimes have been conditioned to the lower prices of Amazon, but, you know, Amazon's not paying rent in your downtown area, or they're not paying the taxes to the community, and right. they're not. When was the last time Amazon did an author event? In, right, in and so that's what we're doing. We're trying to create a community space to, to provide, you know, that community experience that you wouldn't otherwise get, and so we have not only author readings and book signings, we do live music, and we have poetry open mics. And we had a cheese event where we had someone from Zingerman's come and do a cheese tasting and, you know, tie that into some of the cheese books we have here about making your own cheese and selecting the right cheese for pairings. And, you know, that was really fun. So connecting with the community in, in a, a number of different ways has been really fun and probably, you know, really well, I don't know. I, I yeah, we've always had a vision that we kind of wanted to be a lively bookstore in terms of events. We, you know, Friday, Thursday, Friday nights, we usually have some sort of event going on. Um, generally, it's just things that we like, uh, folk music or cheese or something <laughs> right. like that, um, in addition to the standard offerings of reading uh, and signing. Do you find that having um, such a big alum network from the University of Michigan has helped too? Because oh, you yeah. mentioned Zingerman's and... No one knows about Singerman's in D.C. Go online, look at their menu, and order something because it's fantastic. But, um, you know, does that help, too, that University of Michigan base? Do they yeah, the really University of Michigan has been really supportive. You know, so many professors have reached out to us. Um, you know, we, we're not getting into the textbook model because oh, okay. that's a little difficult. But mm -hmm. they, the fact that they're asking us to be a part of that was really, really kind, and they've been really supportive. You know, the ways that we are partnering with U of M is um, the MFA program here is ranked number two in the nation. And so it, it gets quite a lot of attention. And there's a huge writer community and poetry community here. And so we're, I don't know if you've heard of this thing called the Zell Fellowship. Which yeah, is, we, I was just about to ask her if, how that's uh, tying in with you guys. Yeah, certainly. So, so the Zell Fellowship is the year after you finish your MFA program, you get a full year paid for just to write. Mm -hmm. And every MFA grad gets that fiction and poetry, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And so the Zell Fellows had organized to do readings here once a month um, of the work that they're, mm -hmm. they're working on. And these are the up-and-coming writers, um, and we really like to support them. And so we're going to have them here starting next month, mm -hmm. um, which, which is really great. And the MFA program brings in really fantastic authors to the U of M, and it's nice to have that as a resource um, here and to share that kind of literary tradition. Right, because Shaman Drum, you know, you had that link where you would go and you would buy your books at Shaman Drum. You would check your book upstairs, buy your books, and, you know, you had that tie-in, but as a student, I never felt connected to Shaman Drum as a bookstore, as sure. a place to discover literature, but it sounds like you're bridging that gap right there for students, because these are people who are going to be exposed to more uh, contemporary literature. Exactly, yeah. and I, I feel like that's it's definitely a focus for us. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, contemporary literary fiction, and we have two MFA grads on staff who have really helped us build out the poetry section because that is a really big 
um, community here in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. um, and so finding new contemporary poets, too, has mm -hmm. been a big part of our program. And so it's nice to connect with, because that's definitely what um, the writers are looking for. Right. Um, and I think part of that connection is just hosting a broader range of different kinds of events. I think in September we have, I don't know, how many events? Like 18 or 20 <laughs> events. We have an event almost every single day. Wow. Um, and I think if we can build into that culture, like if you are if you are walking around downtown Ann Arbor, chances are if you step by the bookstore, there'll be something going on. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and whether it's, and it's everything from, you know, really the U of M to local authors who there is a couple literary journals based here in Ann Arbor and we just held a couple events for them to showcase some of their authors and mm -hmm. um, stuff. So. so you still see people coming in and doing the browsing. We had a feature recently on this, our site about coming into author events but not buying the book while the author is there or just yeah. scanning it and then buying it on Amazon. You said that you found a balance with that. So you haven't really had to combat that or have you in some way? Not, not as much as I thought we would have. I mean, like, it, it is present. It is always going to be there. But at the same time, um, so many people have come to us that I'm purposefully shopping here because I want you to be here. And I want to shop local, mm -hmm. um, even if that means paying a few extra dollars. Um, and so the fact that people, that's part of their cultural consciousness here really shows that people are, are seeing the independent bookstore differently versus Amazon. Um, right. That's that's not to say that there aren't those people that come in. We just have to say, you know, part of what we say when people are like, well, I can't believe this book is a $30 hardcover. You know what I mean? Right. We have to say, you know, we provide a service to the community with our customer service and our knowledge. Um, um, providing a community space, a physical space, um, and, and that has a cost to it. Yeah. And not every event that we have is going to sell out in terms of books, but if we can at least ensure that most of the events that we have are really interesting and engaging, um, especially in these first few years that we're in existence, it will just hopefully create a reputation that we have good events. And, and a lot of the events that we've been doing so far, you can't find the books on Amazon. They're oh. local poetry chat books yeah. that are published here and not really sold online. And so that, that has a totally different feature. You know, like a Midwestern Gothic is a literary magazine that we had a couple weeks ago. You know, you can't find that on Amazon. And so um, that also creates, you know, discovering something new mm -hmm. and being part of a new literary culture that we see that you wouldn't otherwise find. Which is so important because there's so much happening. Exactly. Yeah, just so much fun. Now, nationwide, you joined a network of really, you know, you know legendary bookstores, Private Cover, Politics and Prose in the Sea, mm -hmm. and uh, Parnassus. Yeah. Uh, so, do you find that that's a network you can now tap into? Is it a brotherhood that you've joined that you yeah. uh, you've really enjoyed learning from? Yeah, definitely. The two. Uh, I mean, like I was, I knew about you know the the kind of brotherhood of independence when I worked. Simon and Schuster, and now that it feels great to be a part of it, we went to the Heartland Fall Forum, which is um, the Midwest Independent Booksellers and the Great Lakes Independent Booksellers Association come together in the fall, um, and we did that last fall before we opened and met, you know, hundreds of booksellers, and it was really fantastic from really tiny places in like rural Indiana to you know bigger places like Louisville that who owns you know her bookstore in St. Paul, Minnesota. So. It was really great. We've got fantastic advice from uh, a few uh, specific. specific bookstores um, here in Michigan. When 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 we were first toying with the idea back pretty much a year ago of opening in Ann Arbor, we approached Nicola over at Nicola's Bookshop, and she sat down with us for two hours and answered all of our questions. Providing um, advice was very. You know, honest, but helpful and, you know, encouraging. Incredibly helpful, incredibly encouraging, which kind of surprised us because, I mean, technically you could say that we are in competition with each other, but um, instead of being in competition, I think we sort of complement each other. Right. If the, we don't have a book, we call over there yeah. and send our customers there and maybe vice versa, which is really nice. We have a list of, like, all the used bookstores and Nicola's, and we'll be adding Bookbound, which is a new bookstore opening on the north side. Um, right underneath our phone calls, so, uh, our telephone. So if we don't have a book, we call over there and, and hopefully instead of having them go business. online, yeah. we right. make sure that they are supporting an independent bookstore. Yeah, you're keeping the money in the community, really, the support in the community. 
And right. and to that extent, like we have a few bookstores that we've emailed if we've ever get gotten stuck with questions. Bookbug and Kalamazoo has been incredibly helpful. Um, and then and I learned from Greenlight Green Bookstore in in Brooklyn. They mentored me and let me work in the store and shared their business plan when I was first starting up. So mm -hmm. that was extremely helpful. And as the process went on, I would email the owner Rebecca Fitting and all kinds of questions, and she was always so generous with her knowledge mm -hmm. and. It's really, it feels great to yeah. have that kind of support. It sounds like you guys have done so much since you opened up in April. I mean, I almost hesitate to ask, what's next? You know, what are the next big things that you have up your sleeve? Hillary? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, just making sure we get through the holiday season. <laughs> I right. think yeah. we're, we don't have any overstock room, so we're like, what are we going to do for the holidays? But I will figure it out. And. I think long term, we'd really like to own the space that we're in, just because mm -hmm. that ensures our longevity with raising rents, rising rents. I think that's a problem that a lot of independent bookstores face. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, but that's a long term goal. Um, yeah, I mean, we have to pay rent, and that's why we can't discount books. I mean, if there is going to be a bookstore in downtown Ann Arbor, we're, we're pretty much doing it as, as cheaply as, as you could do it. Um, and we cannot discount books. So I think, right, what Hillary is saying, tackling that issue of rising rents in the next 10 to 15 years um, is going to be a problem for us. But in the immediate future, I think, you know, just to, to stay here and to be able to hopefully hire some, some full-time people and, and um, continue to build our event schedule and really, really have an anchor in the community, I think is important. Yeah, well, I was just joking with um, Josh that, in 18 years, hopefully, you know, maybe one day we'll be bringing our kid, you know, to U of M because, of course, they're going to be Michigan people. Of course. But, um, <laughs> you know, it'd be great to come back to Lorati and buy a couple of books here while we're in town. Yeah. You know, every year we come back here all the time. And it's great, it's great to see you guys here. And so yeah. I have one last question. Okay. We're a D.C.-based outfit. Do you have any local Michigan author recs that you can provide to our D.C. audience that might intrigue them? I, you know... One that comes to mind right away, I mean, this is a national bestseller, the Detroit and Autopsy book mm -hmm. by Charlie LaDuff, um, has, has been one of our top bestsellers, maybe the top bestseller. Top five, for sure, yeah. yeah. And it, it just looks at Detroit and what has happened to the city and the city planning and the politics and the policy behind that, um, and, and some of the social issues that face face it going forward. And, you know, Detroit's being idealized as, you know, this potential place. But there are still a lot of problems, and I think it helps people understand this locality um, in that perspective. And my pick would be uh, Bonnie Jo Campbell's um, American Salvage. It's a series of short stories um, of some very dark and interesting characters um, in western Michigan and it forces you to see some of these rural places in a, in a perspective that maybe you wouldn't have both um, the violent side and, and the potentially beautiful side. And I, I think, you know, as former city dwellers ourselves, we idealize Michigan and the rural parts. This is beautiful farmland, but there are lots of problems that also come along with that and this kind of explores the drug use that you know happens and Met cooking and it's great it read. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's fantastic. <laughs> but really fantastic writing. It was a National Book Award finalist yes. a few years ago. Okay. I might have to pick that up today. Yeah, yeah. I've been reading a lot of the short stories lately. So. Oh, I love the short stories. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Mike and Hillary, for sitting yeah. down. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, I guess that's a wrap. <laughs>